you find the strength within your community, you find your people, you find whoever you connect with most, whoever accepts you for who you are, and you lift each other up. My name is Rissa Martinez. Pronouns are she, her, they, them. I am a Chicana artist and educator from Oxnard, California. I primarily identify as bisexual. It wasn't exactly a term that I grew up using, but it's a term that I feel more comfortable using now in adulthood. I got my Bachelor of Fine Arts from Otis College of Art and Design, and then I received my teaching credential a couple years after that. And right now I'm receiving my Master's of Fine Arts in visual arts through Pacific Northwest College of Art. I didn't anticipate going to college just because of my low-income background. It was just seen as an unattainable goal to me, but I was a young mother and I had a very young daughter at the time that I graduated high school, and I wanted to prove to her that you could do it, and si se puede, and that whole mentality was important for me to pass on to her. So I took three buses every morning at 4 a.m. to get to L.A. from Oxnard and get my bachelor's degree. Um, it was definitely an experience there because it was a predominantly Caucasian, <laughs> it was a pro predominantly white um, student population there. And there was only a handful of Latinos there or any other culture for that matter. So Art's kind of always been a part of my life since I was a kid. My dad always encouraged me to do artwork. He bought me art supplies at a very young age. I used to go to the junkyard down the street from where I lived and I would spray paint. And um, so it's always been around. I didn't really start taking it seriously until I got older and it became an escape for me. I was dealing with my parents' divorce and I was dealing with, you know, discovering my identity in middle school and high school and it was kind of an outlet for me. So that's when it started to really take a hold in my life. I was often told that I didn't really fit into the art world. It was more reserved for white people and people who had come from privilege and I just didn't fit that bill. And so for me, making art and putting it out there was kind of like my own little revolt. I think for LGBTQ plus folk, art is a way to express themselves um, and much more than just a political format. I think that it gives them a way to be themselves and not just discuss the aspects that everybody else looks at us and says, oh, well, you know, it's a law, it's this and that. It's about who we are as individuals and not just what you think we are. I use a variety of mediums in my artwork. I use scratch board, I use oil paint, I do a combination, I do a lot of work with clothing, embroidery, leather painting, um, mosaics is something that I've been getting into recently, printmaking especially as well. There's definitely a sense of urgency in my artwork just because I don't express myself well in words. I'm not good at talking about my feelings and saying what I what is going on in my head. And so my artwork shares what I want the world to see about me, about the LGBTQ community, about growing up as a Chicana, about you know living with chronic illnesses, like all these various aspects of myself that I want to share with my world and my community, I can express freely through my artwork. I hope that people take away from my artwork that you are more than just what people see on the outside. A lot of my work shows how you feel on the inside. My piece all the way over there is Don't Wanna Be Your Fucking Baby Girl. And that artwork kind of stemmed from me needing to get a hysterectomy. And that was a very major event in my life. And as a Chicana and as a Latin, you're expected to fill that role of being a mother and being a woman and a housewife and those kind of roles that are envisioned for us. And my abuela, I just remember the look that she gave me when I told her that I had to have a hysterectomy. It just looked like her whole world was destroyed because I could no longer be that typical woman that we see in those archetypes of, of what a woman is. Um, so this piece is called Convalescence 
and it was kind of describing how I felt like I was trapped within my own body. At this time, I was receiving a surgery to remove my gallbladder because it was shutting down and it was affecting my pancreas. And from the outside, I looked perfectly normal and relatively healthy, but I felt very trapped within my own body. This piece right here is called Sinful Despondence. And what it signifies is my battle with depression. After having a hysterectomy, I fell in love. <laughs> and so the whole notion of not being able to have kids had a different effect on my life at that point. And I became very suicidal. I had a lot of suicidal ideation. And in Catholicism, that's considered a cardinal sin. You don't do that. You value life. Life is precious. And that mentality can kind of be toxic in its own way. So the hands around my body kind of make me seem like I'm torn in different directions. Like I am being pulled to, you know, embracing the fact that I no longer have a uterus versus wanting to go back to being a mother again. And those kind of um, uses of symbolism. Oh, you're gonna cry. Yes, Punk ideology is very, very anti-establishment. It's very for the people is the best way to describe it. We want everybody to have their rights. We want everybody to feel seen and accepted, but we don't want to just do what everybody else tells us to do. We want to be ourselves fully without being judged by everybody else. So we don't give a shit what you think, we're gonna do what we're gonna do no matter what. And caring for our community members is at the core of our values. I'm artistically influenced by everything around me, anything that I see. I mean, like I said, in my art, even just looking at roses next to chain link fence gives me such inspiration. Looking at um, ceramics from, you know, the 80s, it gives me inspiration. Um, my colleagues around me, the people that I grew up with, the people that I went to college with, all these different artists that I have in my community, they inspire me every day. To get inspired, I just go out into the world. Um, Los Angeles, it's beautiful. There's so much to look at. There's so much to see. And going to a good punk show is a great way to get your energy up and get your brain moving. What gives me the most hope for art in the future is the next generation of queer kids. Like I said, they're so willing is the best word to, to use. They're so willing to try anything and just be out there and learn and grow as people and as a group and as friends. And that kind of energy is going to lead to so much creation and so much artistic beauty. As a teacher, I get to see the next group of queer kids come in and they just, they're so different than when I was in high school. When I was in high school, if you were gay, it was like, <laughs> you know? Um, and I think that it's very different now. Now kids are just like, yeah, I'm gay or I'm bisexual or yeah, I'm a lesbian and, and I'm trans. And I think that that's so wonderful that they look at each other and accept each other fundamentally for who they are. And I think that they're gonna lead the conversations that come from here on out. As a Chicana and as a queer Chicana, you're literally everything that's discriminated against. You're gay, you're a woman, <laughs> you know, you're Latina. And that's just life. You struggle and you survive and you fight. And for me, growing up as I got older, I realized that we can make it so that the next generation doesn't have to fight as hard. We can make it so that they're more accepted and things are more accessible to them. And so for me, as a mother, it's important that my daughter understand that as well and for my daughter to have more opportunities than I was given. I don't want her to have to fight and fight all the time just to get the same opportunities that other people are handed. I want her to have those same opportunities to improve her life and, and go far. If I had to give my younger self some piece of advice, it would be to keep going and to ignore everybody and their hate and to just keep pushing through because eventually you'll end up where you need to be and you'll end up here. <laughs>